The merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the fourth Sunday of Easter, sometimes known as the Good Shepherd Sunday, Vocation Sunday, because the Gospel today is about the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. And that's precisely what the Good Shepherd has done. Jesus himself has laid down his life for us and perhaps he asks us to lay down our lives to one another and a lot of that has been happening during this uh, coronavirus outbreak. People, especially in the health professions, have indeed laid down their lives for others and we remember them especially at this Mass. So, to prepare ourselves to celebrate it, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd with a loud voice. The whole house of Israel can be certain that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Hearing this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the Apostles, what must we do, brothers? You must repent, Peter answered, and every one of you must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise that was made is for you and your children, and for all those who are far away, for all those whom the Lord our God will call to himself. He spoke to them for a long time using many arguments, and he urged them, Save yourselves from this perverse generation. They were convinced by his arguments, and they accepted what he said and were baptized. That very day, about 3,000 were added to their number. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Alleluia! You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The merit in the sight of God is in bearing punishment patiently when you are punished for doing your duty. This, in fact, is what you were called to do, because Christ suffered for you and left you an example for you to follow the way he took. He had not done anything wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was tortured, he made no threats, but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross, so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I tell you most solemnly, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but gets in some other way, is a thief and a brigand. The one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the flock. The gatekeeper lets him in. The sheep hear his voice. One by one he calls his own sheep and leads them out. When he has brought out his flock, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow, because they know his voice. They never follow a stranger, but run away from him. They do not recognize the voice of strangers. Jesus told them this parable, but they failed to understand what he meant by telling it to them. So Jesus spoke to them again. I tell you most solemnly, I am the gate of the sheep. All others who have come are thieves and brigands, but the sheep took no notice of them. I am the gate. Anyone who enters through me will be safe. He will go freely in and out and be sure of finding pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of the Lord. A mother became very anxious because her daughter could not find a man to marry. One day, she mentioned to her mother that a certain man had eyes for her. The mother asked, what religion is he? The daughter replied, none. The mother said, it would be difficult for you to be married to a man with no religion. Why don't you teach him about our faith? The daughter agreed and started teaching him about the Catholic faith. Finally, when it seemed they were becoming a serious item, 
The girl came home with a worried look on her face and the mother asked if she was okay. She replied, I think I taught him too much. He now wants to become a priest. I know in times past, especially in Ireland, a lot of young men were leaned on a bit to join the priesthood. One priest who later left the ministry told me that his mother should have been ordained, not him. However, we can't blame t people too much in those far off days. The Catholic faith was in a sense in their bones and a priest in the family was considered to be a great blessing. They used to say, with a priest in the family and a pump in the yard, you had it made. Now today, I think it's a bit different. The message of the Gospel today, which we preach, often goes against the grain. For instance, last year, Archbishop Nichols cautioned priests in their preaching not pleased to skim over the difficult parts of the Gospel and Church teaching to suit themselves. In cherry-picking parts of the Gospel and Church teaching, it goes to show that priests too have got feet of clay. That being said, I would say there's never been a better time to be a priest. Why then the shortage of vocations? Like many people mistakenly think celibacy is hardly the cause of vocation shortage. The cause is far more likely to do with the repression of our innate desire for God. Endorsed, I would say, by our postmodern culture. Repression has negative connotations. Over a century ago, Sigmund Freud reminded us of that. But today, I'm afraid, we've repressed the sense of God and of the transcendent. By and large, people with an exclusively secular mindset have taken control of the higher levels of government, academia, and especially the media. We don't do God, one politician famously said. Perhaps the present pandemic might make him have second thoughts on that. Ten years ago or so, Pope Benedict said, Faith in God, the domain of spirituality, is banished from everyday life or marginalised. Our whole spiritual side has been repressed. This is the new neurosis of our time. This is our deep wound, Benedict said. The neurosis of our times is our silence regarding God. And maybe the present pandemic is helping us to refocus our minds and hearts on God again. According to the retired Pope, the crisis of vocations is basically a crisis of faith. So, vocation shortage, marriage shortage. People are not marrying as much as they should. Children short, shortage. They're not having as much children as they should. That has a lot to do with the repression of our religious sense. I notice from it, for instance, from our baptism register, that in 1958 there were over a hundred baptisms in one year at St. Vincent's. But in 2020, 1920, in 2019, over about 60 years later, the baptisms have only been in their teens. 
St. John Paul II saw this anti-life drift as a sign of the absence of God in people's hearts. One of the ripple effects of this is a downturn in religious vocations, which of course affects us all. However, but for anyone who responds generously to the call to the priesthood or consecrated life and lives up to it, Jesus promises a hundredfold in this life and eternal happiness in the next. The call of the Good Shepherd does not disappoint. Surely, the present pandemic involving the closure of, of churches and social isolation should make us all sit up and think more deeply about the deeper questions of life and indeed faith. The recovery of vocations will depend upon it. Let us pray to the Father, the all-powerful God, who raised up Jesus, our Prince and Saviour. We pray for our bishops and priests who watch over the people of God. May they be true shepherds, worthy of the name, who love and care for their people. Lord, hear us. We pray that the people may hear the voice of the Good Shepherd speaking to them when the word Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, 
it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands with praise and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord and our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land and every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the twofold so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The Good Shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia.
spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to have you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me be separated from you. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you all, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.